Hey guys, Zach King here with another Final Cut Pro tutorial. This week I had a couple subscribers and viewers ask to uh, go over a keyframing lesson. and So I'm going to be going over the basics, just the basics of keyframing here. And in the next tutorial, in a couple tutorials, I, I can go in depth on uh, some different keyframing techniques. But in this tutorial, I'll keep it simple, um, simple so you guys can get started here. I just have a picture here. You can do this with video or whatever. I just am using a picture for this example. And uh, keyframing is pretty simple. It takes you know a little practice to get used to, um, but after you get over you know that curve of learning, it's it's pretty pretty straightforward. So let's get start started here. I just I just got a picture from my browser here. Um, I scaled it down, and uh, I'm gonna probably start. Let's actually start up here in the corner. It really doesn't matter. This is going to be really simple, really simple keyframing. I'm just kind of making it up as I go here. So make sure you got the clip selected in your in your timeline that you're going to keyframe. And I'm going to grab the motion tab up here. And you know if you want to adjust your scale, go right ahead. I'm going to make it about that big, up in the corner. I'm going to start it in the corner. And uh, this little guy here is a keyframing button. And let me zoom in a little bit this is your keyframing tool right here and you click that when you want to add a keyframe and uh, these are all keyframing tools as well right here you have this guy and uh, another one here looks like this one is for the scale this one's for rotation center and anchor point and uh, so I'm gonna use this this button right here though because this just takes a position and this takes a scale this takes the center. This does everything. So I'm going to start with my uh, playhead in the beginning of the clip or where I want it to start keyframing. And I have it up in the corner. And I'm going to press the keyframing button. And not, you can't see anything happen except for it turns a little green. The wireframe image turns green, which means there's a keyframe added in that frame. And I'm going to scroll ahead through my timeline later in the clip, maybe a couple seconds. And I'm going to simply drag it down here and you see this line follows it right here from this point to the center of our, our frame and that is a keyframe right there that path says from from the beginning to where I ended it's gonna move and uh, you know you can add a little rotation up there that's nice I'm gonna move it to the edge so we're gonna have a little bouncing motion it's gonna come down bounce off and go up to this wall and bounce around the the frame here so and you saw here right up here if I zoom in for you when I did that rotation it added a keyframe right here as well so all these little dots are keyframes so let's go on I'm gonna scroll through maybe two or three seconds in and I'm gonna drag it over here have it bounce off this wall and uh, I'm gonna also go rotate it another 180 degrees by the time it hits that wall scrub through another two seconds and pull it over in this corner and when it does I want it to go another 90 degrees or so I'm just making this up you can do whatever you guys think is cool and uh, another two seconds over here come down and you see I'm not clicking the keyframe button anymore what this is doing is saying since I started the keyframe up in this corner way back here in the timeline, it, it's still tracking it and saying, okay, I'm still making keyframes. Um, so we'll keep going and just, just play around with this. This is it's pretty fun. I'm going to go another 90 degrees and have it go up there. Um, oops, I was adjusting an actual path. And that's the cool thing about keyframes. After I do this, let me play it for you what I have so far. It's almost like that uh, that effect that your your screensaver does. It's cool, and it, it you know if you had some cool music going here and other special effects in the background, this would be really cool. Um, and this is just the beginning of so many endless things you could do with this. But let me go in a little bit. I don't want to get too de detailed in this part. I'm going to do this in another tutorial. But basically, after you map these keyframes, this is called mapping keyframes. This path here. I can actually go in and adjust 
the way I want it to move. So let's see how that affects it. You see it'll go around the path in a, let me back up here where it goes around. Right there, you see it kind of does a little a softer turn. And you, you, know, you can go in individual key points and do these adjustments. You can move those main points around. You can still adjust the rotation somewhere, maybe toggling through here and saying, oh, it's at, and if you watch this, the rotation is actually changing up here. Um, as I'm doing this, you can see the rotations moving. And maybe at this point in the frame, I don't want it rotated this. I want it rotated 180 degrees the other way. Simply move it around, and that's where it is instead of the other side. So, I mean, there's so much you can do with this. It's really great. Play around with it. And in an upcoming tutorial, um, I'm going to go in detail about the, these handles here. They're... Um, there's so many useful things that a lot of people don't know about how to adjust these with maximum control. So I'll go through that in detail in, a, in another tutorial. Check out FinalKing.com. More tutorials there, more video tools. Still getting started with the website there, but it's, it's going to be pretty sweet. So check it out, and I'll see you guys later.